Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Many of you might have heard that the Antichrist and the false prophets will arise in the Middle East. And Muslims believe that at that time the Mahdi will appear during a time of great upheaval to bring about peace and prosperity by defeating those two personages. The question is, my friends, is that what the Bible says? Is this in any way confirmed in Scripture? Or is the Bible telling us something entirely different? Well, today I'd like to read to you a few excerpts from an interesting article, several articles, in fact, from, in this particular case, the Wikipedia Encyclopedia, summarizing the expectations of the Muslims when it comes to the Mahdi. And if that information is in any way incorrect, I'd like to hear from you. Bring me the evidence that what I'm saying today is not correct, based on the Quran. So this article says that the Mahdi, which means actually the guided one, is the prophesied redeemer of Islam, who will stay on earth for seven, nine, or nineteen years, according to various interpretations, before the day of judgment, or literally the day of resurrection, and alongside Jesus will rid the world of wrongdoing, injustice, and tyranny. He goes on to say that the following beliefs concerning the Mahdi are shared by both Sunni and Shi'i Muslims. The Mahdi will be a descendant of Muhammad of the line of Fatima. He will have the same name as Muhammad. He will be a forerunner to Jesus' Islamic rule. Notice this, a forerunner to Jesus' Islamic rule. His coming will be accompanied by the raising of a black standard, the historical flag flown by Muhammad in Islamic tradition. His coming will be accompanied by the appearance of the Masi al-Dajjal, which is actually a description of the Antichrist. There will be a lunar and solar eclipse within the same months of Ramadan. A star with a luminous tail will rise from the east before the coming of the Mahdi. Then the article continues. Shia Muslims believe that the Mahdi is Muhammad al-Mahdi, the 12th Imam, who was born in 869 AD and was hidden by God at the age of 5 or in 874 AD. He is still alive but has been in occultation, awaiting the time that God has decreed for his return. He will return as the Mahdi with a company of his chosen ones, and his enemies will be led by the one-eyed Antichrist and the Sufyani. In biblical terminology, you would call that other person the false prophet, if you want to talk to the first one as the beast. It says the Sufyani will be one of many Muslim tyrants that the Mahdi will have to face in the Middle East. He will spread corruption and mischief on the earth before the Mahdi. He will be such a tyrant that he will kill the children and rip out the bellies of women. The Sufyani will murder those from the household of the Prophet and will rule over Syria. When he hears about the Mahdi, he will send an army to seize and kill him. However, the earth will swallow his army before it even reaches the Mahdi. Now then the article goes on to say, by giving a different variation, saying the two armies will fight one final apocalyptic battle, where the Mahdi and his forces will prevail over evil. After the Mahdi has ruled earth for a number of years, Isa, or Jesus, will return. Now notice carefully it's what's being said here. So the Mahdi will rule first for several years, and then... Christ will return, Jesus will return. It says, among the most commonly reported signs that precede the advent of the Mahdi in Shia Islam are the following. And by the way, for instance, Syria or Iran belong to the Shia Islamic faith. The Muslims will throw off the reins and take possession of the land, throwing out the authority of the foreigners. There will be a great conflict in the land of Syria, until it is destroyed. Death and fear will afflict the people of Baghdad and Iraq. Of those Sunnis, and Saudi Arabia, for instance, of course, belongs to the Sunni phase, of those Sunnis that hold to the existence of the Mahdi, some believe the Mahdi will be an ordinary man born to an ordinary woman. The Prophet Muhammad has said, 
The world will not come to an end until the Arabs are ruled by a man from my family whose name is the same as mine and whose father's name is the same as my father's. He will rule for seven or eight years. Now, not everyone is in agreement, and this particular article talks about those Islamic scholars who wholly reject the Mahdi doctrine, including Sir Mohammed Iqbal, who wrote, the concept of the Mahdi is a completely Iranian perspective. This concept has no link to the Quran, Islam, and Arabic perceptions. I want to emphasize, my friends, that what we have read so far is not at all in harmony with the Bible, even when it talks about Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that the Quran teaches something entirely different about Christ than what the Christian Bible teaches. Again, quoting from the Wikipedia Encyclopedia, let me read you this section. The belief in Jesus is required in Islam and a requirement of being a Muslim. The Quran states that Jesus was born to Mary as a result of virginal conception. Jesus was not crucified. Let me repeat this. Jesus was not crucified. But instead, he was raised up by God unto the heavens. This raising is understood to mean through bodily ascension. Jesus is considered to have been a Muslim. Islam rejects the view that Jesus was God incarnate, or the Son of God, that he was ever crucified or resurrected, or that he ever atoned for the sins of mankind. The Quran states that Jesus was created from the act of God's will. The Quran compares the miraculous creation of Jesus with the creation of Adam. Islamic texts categorically deny the idea of crucifixion or death attributed to Jesus by the Bible. There has been unanimous agreement amongst Islamic scholars in denying the crucifixion. Let me read to you two excerpts from the Quran. One is Surah 4, 157, saying this. They said that in boast, we killed Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not. But so it was made to appear to them and those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow, for of a surety they killed him not. And here's another quote from Surah 930, saying, The Christians call Christ the Son of God, that is a saying from their mouth. In this they but imitate what the unbelievers of old used to say, Allah's curse be on them how they are deluded away from the truth. Let me also point out that another section from the Wikipedia I've quoted from says this. Islamic texts regard Jesus as a righteous messenger of God but reject the idea of him being God or the begotten Son of God. According to Islamic scriptures, the belief that Jesus is God or the Son of God is shirk or the sole unpardonable sin. The sole unpardonable sin. So if you believe as a Muslim that Jesus Christ was a Son of God, that he existed as God prior to his coming as a human being, and that he died for the sins of man, and that he then was resurrected and is right now in heaven, next to God the Father, that is the unpardonable sin. On the other hand, the Bible is telling us that if you don't believe that Jesus Christ was all what I've just explained, and that it is only through his death that you can have forgiveness of your sins, and if you reject that fact, and reject the fact that you can and have to have forgiveness of your sins after you repent, then ultimately you have committed the unpardonable sin. So you see how these two concepts are totally contradictory. Now I also like to read something more about what is being taught in Islam regarding what Jesus Christ is going to do once he returns to this earth. It says, 
Muslims believe that Isa, or Jesus, will return at a time close to the end of the world. Jesus' descent will be in the midst of wars fought by the Mahdi, the Redeemer of Islam, against the Antichrist and his followers. Jesus will descend at the point of a white arcade east of Damascus, dressed in yellow robes, his head anointed. Now, of course, the Bible says he's going to come back with white robes, and he's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. It says he will then join the Mahdi in his war against the Antichrist. Jesus, considered as a Muslim, will abide by the Islamic teachings. Eventually, there will be one community, that of Islam. After the death of the Mahdi, Jesus will assume leadership. Jesus' rule is said to be around 40 years, after which he will die. Muslims will then bury him in the city of Medina, in the grave left vacant beside Muhammad. So we see that these concepts are totally contradictory because Jesus Christ is going to return as God, an immortal spirit God being, who of course cannot die and he will always rule over this world. And everyone, Jews and Gentiles, whoever you want to talk about, will ultimately submit to the rule of Jesus Christ when he rules from Jerusalem. But I also want to briefly address the issue of the Antichrist and the false prophets as they are depicted in Muslim theology. The Bible says something totally different. The Bible nowhere says that these figures will arise in the Middle East. Quite to the contrary, the Bible says that those figures will arise in Europe. The beast is going to be the last emperor, so to speak, of the ancient Roman Empire. Arising one more time in Europe, this empire will revive one more time, and the beast is going to be the final leader of that empire. And the false prophet is a religious leader working hand in hand with his political leader in Europe. And if you have any doubt about this, please read our free booklet, The Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord, in which we explain this very clearly, and also our other booklet, Europe and Prophecy. So if you have been taught in one way or another that those two figures, the Antichrist, the false prophet, will arise in the Middle East, you know now where this idea comes from. It doesn't come from the Bible. It comes from the Muslim world, it appears. And that concept is equally wrong as is the concept as to how they look at Jesus Christ, the one through whom and through whom alone you can obtain forgiveness of sins. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.